Now, could you talk to us a little bit about some of the other benefits that uh, the world would derive in the public health sector from the efforts to reduce CO2 in terms of how that would also have the uh, same uh, benefits or similar benefits in reduction of uh, sulfur uh, and the, redu the reduction of uh, other pollutants uh, that contribute to smog, that contribute to uh, other public health problems. How does that, all of that interrelate in terms of uh, the public health uh, impact on the planet? Yes, sir. I think there's a range of health benefits that would accrue from stabilizing the world's climate. Firstly, heat waves. We know as temperatures increase, as climate change progresses, heat waves will become more frequent, more intense, and these obviously are a great health hazard. They can affect morbidity and mortality of large populations, as we've seen, for instance, in the case of the heat wave that took place in Europe in 2003. We know that vector-borne diseases, including diseases like malaria, would be on the increase. Uh, just to give you an example, Recently, there be, there's been an increase in diseases in countries like Italy, where temperatures have been going up. And a lot of uh, the pests, a lot of the vector-borne diseases uh, would become more prevalent with higher temperatures and changes that are taking place. Uh, the increase in floods and droughts have major implications for health. Every time there's a flood anywhere in the world, uh, the biggest challenge for policymakers uh, and health officials is to see that you minimize and control the outbreak of disease as a result of flooding. So there's a, a whole range of these benefits, health benefits that would arise if we were able to stabilize uh, the concentration of greenhouse gases and temperatures. And the converse of that is if we don't do anything, then I think the health problems all over the world will also have major economic impacts. If one looks at factories and businesses, and if we find people are going to suffer from disease to a much greater extent, this would obviously have a major harmful impact on productivity of various goods and services. Could, could you tell us what the most recent uh, developments that have been identified in global warming are of greatest concern to you that scientists never anticipated uh, three to five years ago? I think one issue that's causing a lot of concern among scientists, uh, Mr. Chairman, is uh, the possibility of collapse of the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets. And if that were to happen, then essentially we would be changing the geography of this planet because you would have sea level rise of several meters. Now, I'm not saying that there is any great certainty attached to that happening, but recent writings seem to raise that concern to a much greater extent than was the case, say, five years ago, because we find that there is much greater evidence of changes taking place in these large bodies of ice that are sitting on large areas of land. And if they were to collapse, then we really have a very serious crisis as far as sea level rise is concerned. Now, we just failed in the United States Congress um, by a small number of votes to put on the, um, the statutes of, uh, of the United States a requirement for uh, the production of renewable electricity as a national standard. Um, is it important for the United States to set a national standard, to set an example for the rest of the world? and? If that did happen, what would the benefits be to the planet if we uh, had a, a revolution in uh, renewable electrical generation? I could draw an analogy with the cafe standards for the automobile industry. They clearly had a major impact in terms of producing global benefits through energy security because uh, 